Hey, what is up there everyone? Welcome here to another episode on the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. I'm Yelis Fass, your host, and as well a fellow cardiac arrest survivor. On the podcast, I, you know, talk with fellow cardiac arrest survivors, as I will hear in this episode, and to share their journey that, you know, uh, you can hopefully use if you are a survivor as well, or a co-survivor, to help you uh, go through that journey that you are going through um, to find some insights, some lessons, some advice, uh, and maybe some understanding. Now, occasionally I will also uh, talk uh, to cardiac health experts. We have had a cardiologist on the show, a psychologist, a rehabilitation expert. Uh, so, you know, if whichever podcast app you're using. If you just scroll through the list of episodes, you will find those. And of course, you know, in the future, more cardiac health experts will appear on the show soon, by the way. I am, uh, yeah, full on searching for a new cardiac health expert. Uh, But that's for another episode. Because in this episode, like I said, I am talking to a fellow cardiac arrest survivor, namely Grant McLeod, who survived his cardiac arrest eight months ago. So he's also quite fresh on this journey and uh, yeah we talk about uh, how or you know why he had a cardiac arrest uh, where how he survived it um, the journey so far how it's been for him one last thing before we jump into the conversation if you will come to enjoy this episode or you know any other episodes uh, if you've listened to previous ones uh, it would really really help me out a lot Uh, if you could you know, take a minute of your time, uh, it doesn't even take a minute, to leave a rating uh, or a review on whichever podcast app uh, you're using. It would really help to, you know, spread the awareness of cardiac arrest uh, more out into the world. So if you would take the time, thank you, really. Okay, having, you know, said that, let's jump into the conversation with fellow cardiac arrest survivor and heart warrior, Grant McLeod. Grant? A warm welcome here to the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. It's really cool, uh, you know, to have this conversation with you. Awesome to be here, actually. Yeah, big fan. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, cool. I uh, we we actually met um, with one of the online meetups that we do here at the Heart Warrior Project. That's the I think the first time that I talked to you, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, so it's really yeah, I don't know, uh, interesting for me now to kind of know more in depth about your story because I don't know that many details about it. So how did it for you start, you know, this story of surviving a cardiac arrest? Um, well, without going too far back, um, I'm Canadian and uh, as some people probably know, we're a hockey crazed nation and uh, I've been playing hockey since I was a small small child and still played up until recently um just playing men's rack hockey and uh i was playing one evening and uh i I was on the ice skating and i felt a little faint and next thing i know 18 hours later i woke up in hospital um been kind of filling in bits and pieces here and there along the way about what happened but essentially um, I had a, a blockage, a couple of blockages that developed over time. And uh, the left side of my heart finally just said, I've had enough and shut down. <laughs> yeah, It was a bit of a shock to a whole lot of people, particularly since I'm, uh, I've been fairly athletic my entire life and including... A lot of guys that I know that I have played hockey with were completely surprised that if they had to pick someone who was going to have a health issue, they were not going to pick me. Yeah. So I I kind of scared a lot of people. And um, from what I understand, there was a, there was a couple of guys on the ice with me who had had CPR training and they knew at least some basics on where to get started. And um, uh, one guy um, checked for vitals. Didn't find any and started TPR right away and started, you know, hey, guys, get the get the defibrillator, et cetera. And uh, apparently they were able to at least revive me on the ice before EMS showed up. And uh, 
and I was taken off the hospital after that and woke up in uh, ICU on Friday late morning, I guess it was, to a bit of a surprise to me. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a shock. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How long was this ago? Uh this was it's not quite eight months. Um eight it happened months? yeah, it happened in October. And uh it's it's been a it's felt like a lifetime ago. My wife and I talk about it quite often and it's it's a lifetime ago to us. It just seems so long ago, but it really isn't in the big scheme of things. It's it's quite recent still. Um so I'm I'm sort of still in recovery, uh, for the most part. Um but yeah, it was you know, I, I didn't really have any underlying health issues at all, not that I was aware of. The only the only thing that um that I was concerned with was I was I have a family history of cholesterol and I was trying to manage it through a uh, diet and exercise and it was go- it was going fine. I wasn't I wasn't uh, in a threat zone. I was kind of just uh, my doctor said I was in a a warning zone so I had to be careful. And uh and I was being careful. So having a blockage was what <laughs> was a total yeah. shock to me. Yeah. Uh apparently I had a silent heart attack probably 2 years ago they estimated, which I again, I I was a little blown away by that. Yeah. Wait, how did they know? Um, when they did, when I was in hospital, I was in hospital for uh, pretty much two weeks, and uh, they did all a whole series of tests to try and figure out what was what was going on with me. And through the tests, they discovered my, the right side of my heart. Um, there was a hundred percent blockage there, but over time, there were. Uh, blood vessels growing to compensate. So on my right side, I still had ample supply. It was no problem. But they said that at some point in time in the last couple of years, you had a silent heart attack. And they could tell by what they were seeing. uh, Like they did an angioplast, et cetera, the the, the usual sort of heart tests. And um, it it was a bit of a shock. I had no idea. But I guess that's why they call it a silent heart attack. Um, Yeah. Yeah. No idea from my side. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I actually didn't know that there is something like a silent heart attack, that that was uh, a thing. Yeah, it, um, hmm. it, they, they said that it, it probably, I probably would have had some chest pain and that would have been probably normal after playing some sort of a sport. Because I, I, I play hockey pretty much 12 months of the year, and um, including in the summers I was playing ball hockey with a bunch of dudes that, you know, uh, lots of exercise when it's 30 degrees outside probably wasn't the best choice, but yeah, it uh, probably contributed to it a little bit too. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I, I do remember from the, the online meetup that you did share a bit about the thing that you had your cardiac rest, uh, during hockey. Uh, yeah. I did not know actually that it was only eight months ago or I don't recall that, but wow, that's recent. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I actually ended up having a double bypass, which was, again, to me, it was just a complete shock. And I I do have an ICD as well, which I I think we talked about then. Yeah. 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 That was, the ICD was kind of the worst experience of the whole ordeal, really. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure you can attest to that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Wait. What makes you say that the ICD is the worst part of it? For me, it was the worst um, because, uh, comparative, comparatively speaking, when I when I was having the bypass surgery done, it was. I'm going to say it was it was, I want to say painless. I know that sounds weird, but um, the hospital I was at has a cardiac ward, and they were exceptionally good about doing the bypass. So I was never really in any pain I was comfortable you know fairly comfortable for the entire process and I actually had I went back to the hospital uh two weeks later I had the ICD done and it was so painful it was ridiculous like I mean my my wife and I were chatting about it last night on how I was walking around the house for a couple of days I was so uncomfortable with pain and they gave me some pain meds for it, but it really didn't seem to 
didn't really seem to cut the pain very much. It was very uncomfortable. And even during, during ha- uh, the process of having it put in, uh, it was uncomfortable as hell. Um, you know, they use, they use a local and, uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how good that local is, but there's a lot of times I could feel exactly what they were doing. And it, it was painful. Yeah. And even what well, the doctor's putting in the staples and, uh, I was telling him I could feel every staple he was putting in and it was painful. And he's like, sorry, but, but he kept going. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, ah, okay. Actually, I mean, uh, most people w- when their ICD is inserted, they are awake, right? It's just yeah. local anesthesia or local. I don't know. You know. Um, but actually, I um, when they put mine in, they asked me if they wanted to do some extra research on me, if I was okay with that, and I said like, yeah, sure. And they actually put me in full anesthesia, so I was really? actually, yeah, I was not oh. aware. I was asleep, right, for the. Um, ICD being put in. So uh, when people say that it's really painful, uh, yeah, I have no experience of that. Um, oh, yeah. It's lucky you. But it, <laughs> yeah, I guess that was a bit, yeah, uh, lucky in, in a sense, yeah. Um, but you said that it also was really painful afterwards. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was. It was, um, I, I don't know why. They gave me pain meds, but they just didn't seem to cut the pain much. Like it, they, it may have dulled it a little bit, but it was still, it was still there. Like it was, you know, I'm pacing the house because I'm just uncomfortable as heck. And it's just not, you know, it, it left me with a lot of bruising on my, on the left side, down my, down my arm, down my side. And just, wait, you have the SICD or the I have it. One? It's up in the pack up here. So it, it was, it was just pain. <laughs> I have a pretty good tolerance for pain. That that time, no, <laughs> no. I'm gonna pace to try and work off some of that pain energy, which is pretty much what I was doing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, interesting, because I did not feel any significant pain afterwards. Really? Yeah. Again, you're a lucky guy. So, well, <laughs> in, in in some areas, I guess. <laughs> but uh, what kind of pain was it? Just like uh. It dull. Like a, okay. it, went, it didn't throb. It was just dull there all the time. And it took, and I've heard, I've heard stories of other people who've had them and it's just, it's just for a couple of days, but it's just sort of, it gnaws at you. You can't, for me anyway, I couldn't just sit there and, you know, try and watch TV and recover. It was just, it was there and it was prevalent enough that it sort of distracted me from focusing on anything else. And it and I they gave me some, I think it was they gave me oxy for the pain, but I just found it wasn't wasn't great, and I didn't want to start taking more of it. It's just not my kind of thing. So I, I took the recommended doses, and it just it dulled it, but no, it was it was painful. How is it now? Actually, I mean, eight months later, um, it it's fine. It's um, every once in a while I get a. A little, bit, a little bit of pain from it, but it's more uncomfortable than anything else now. Like sleeping is, you know, I'm a side sleeper and, yeah, I like sleeping on my left side and it's, 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 you know, it's there when you lay down to go to sleep. It's, I know, it's, same. it's in yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Just enough to be a nuisance yeah. really. Yeah. But I, I totally agree with why I did it. I mean, they gave me the option and I chose to do it for the right mm. reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they wanted to make sure they, they, you know, they were not, they said they were ninety nine percent sure my cardiac arrest was because of the blockages, but they they can't say a hundred percent emphatically that it was. So they said let's, you know, they suggested the ICD, and I went, yeah, I weighed the options for about two weeks and decided to do it just to play it safe because I uh-huh. don't want to do that again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Now, after having it, you don't feel any regrets in a way that you no, got it. Not at all. Yeah, I've had a funny couple of sort of <laughs> uh, sort of incidences with it because I've had a couple of uh, uh, checkups where they check the device for me, and you know they they let you know ahead of time that you know they do the connection through the computer and hey we're going to speed up your heart rate we're going to slow it down we're going to yeah, yeah. test it 
And then they start making yeah. noises. And my, my wife was in the room at the time and she couldn't figure out where the noises were coming from. And I was trying to tell her, no, no, that's me. <laughs> yeah. And I've had a couple of battery Wait. warnings. Like, uh, they told me that if you, to get, yeah, if you get too close to a magnetic field, it'll start making noises. So I've had a couple of instances here in the house where I grabbed, uh, I grabbed my laptop and put it under my arm against my chest to carry it because I was reaching for something else. It's kind of bent over. And yeah. the ICD went off because it was too close to the really? laptop, I guess. Yeah. It, it, it was the first time it happened. It kind of shocked me. I'm like, what's that sound? What's going on? And I realized it what? was me. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. That's it was, a bit, it was a bit of a weird yeah. one. Yeah. There was no one here. There was no one around at the time. So it kind of struck me as odd. Like I said, they started making noise. And I'm like, what's going on? What is that? Yeah. And I figured well, it out. Uh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I thought that would not happen, actually, especially not with a laptop or something. That, I was a little surprised too because I didn't think the battery in in a laptop would be strong enough to do anything like that. But I guess it was the way I held it. Like I I bent over, had the laptop sort of under my arm, and it was right against the ICD. And uh, didn't take long. It started making noise pretty quick. Yeah. And you asked your doctor that that was because of that, and they yeah. said yes. Yeah. Okay. I've had one other <laughs> okay. one other incident where we have this sort of mesh. A screen door on our patio so our dog can go in and out relatively easily I can, you know they can just break it's got a magnet that seals it in the middle and the dog knows that you know go out the door you just break the magnet and go out and i was standing in the patio door recently and one of the magnets was against my chest and set, and set my icd off yeah and it, i was surprised by that one because the magnet and the doors i didn't think were that strong Wow. And it yeah. also made a beep sound or like a sound. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like my wife was sitting on the patio okay. and she could hear it. And I had to tell her, no, no, don't panic. It's just me. The magnet's in the door. Yeah. How loud is it? Because I you know, I never heard a sound of it. So how loud is the sound of the ICD? It's, it's loud enough. She was sitting about 10 or 12 feet away and she could hear it. Okay. So it's, it's, it's got some volume to it for sure. But it's a, it's a, it's a different style of beep than that I was sort of expecting. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, a steady beep, 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 beep. Uh, but it's it's high pitched. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's unmistakable that it's, you know, it, it's got to be something un, uh, sort of unusual or urgent or, you know, it gives you that sort of impression. <laughs> wow. It's, yeah. well, first of all, I think very freaky to have some kind of sound come out of you. But yeah. secondly... <laughs> It sounds like your ICD, I don't, I, I'm not a specialist or anything, right? So uh, about ICDs, but it sounds like it's very sensitive actually to magnets. Uh, like, yeah, maybe. I mean, I have another appointment to get it checked. I have a yeah. an annual appointment. Maybe I'll ask them then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty good about doing the checks on them, you know, keeping an eye on it's it. It's every half year in Canada too, or how is it for you? Um, I did... Uh, I did one after three months, and then I did one after six. My next one is after a year. <clears throat> so the first two were kind of make sure the device is in there and working, and it, the wires are connected, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, after that, it's just making sure the device still functions properly, and they're checking battery levels, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, how, you know, besides the ICD, you also take some medication, yeah. Um, are they still going to run any more tests to figure, I don't know, more things out of why it happened? Or how is it, how is the future kind of looking for you around that? Um, I, I, okay, we'll start with the meds. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm on a, that's okay. I'm on kind of a barrage of meds, but they're kind of the usual ones. You know, I have uh, a statin, I'm taking a beta blocker, a blood pressure pill, um, ASA. I, there's, there's one I'm taking that is to, I think it's to protect the stomach lining um, because of all the meds I'm taking, which yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. Mm. to me, that one's, I, I'm really impressed with that one. I've been a, a lifelong sufferer of heartburn. <laughs> so this one is, is a blessing to me because I haven't had heartburn since I started taking it, which is, to me, is fantastic. Yeah. All um, right. Okay. I've had a a few discussions with 
my doctor about uh, the meds themselves and uh you know the the typical is you'll be on them for a year then at a year we'll do some retesting to see where you're at and decide you know which ones you should keep which ones you shouldn't and um it, the blood pressure one kind of confuses me because I've never had any sort of issues with blood pressure at all but they they gave it to me as a standard you know you have to take it I'm on a blood thinner too and uh the blood pressure one they toned it down a little bit because I have no history of blood pressure but they still want me to take it which is fine and it's a it's funny because it's a tiny tiny little pill and uh if I'm not careful I almost lost it a few times trying to before I take it it's like oh, wow put the glasses on <laughs> got to find it yeah yeah um testing I'll probably uh you know after all the testing I've been through they kind of said you know you're you're good um go ahead and live your life well and my cardiologist said you know we'll do an annual checkup which is fine I'm okay with that um but I've been through enough testing in the first several months I don't want to do anymore yeah, yeah, for a while yeah. <laughs> yeah it becomes tiring it does i mean i was yeah. i still have scars in my arms from when i was in hospital i was iv'd up for the full two weeks in both arms so my arms are still healing a little bit from that so okay. the, yeah, yeah. the testing is like okay uh, i'm good doing the testing now but you know eight months from now i'm glad not doing any yeah for sure yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to get back to normal right, uh, life, or right? some so, sort of normal, yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because how is the you know the medication kind of affecting you? Um, do you feel quite normal on it? I don't know. Do you feel more tired from it? I mean, you're still recovering from the cardiac arrest too, right? So yeah, it's a bit. Uh, uh, there, you know, there's some. Yeah. How do you feel today? Today I'm tired. <laughs> um, it's been a long week. And uh, the one thing that hasn't really come back yet is my stamina. So I'm trying to, you know, give myself a bit of a break when it comes to, you know, I can't, I can't go as long as hard as I used to because of, because I'm still in recovery. So today, it, I mean, I'm, I'm glad I work at home on Friday because then it's a little easier. I don't have to get in a car and go somewhere. You know, I can sort of, I can go at a different pace at home. I don't have... 80 people, you know, putting demands on you all the time. So, which is good. Um, the meds themselves, um, I'm okay taking them. There's not really a lot of, I don't feel a lot of side effects. Um, the only, the two things that bother me about the meds is the blood thinner. Because it just seems mm -hmm. like all you have to do is get a paper cut and you bleed for half an hour. It's ridiculous. Which, and my, my wife <laughs> yep. My wife gets a little worried when I get out the knife and start making dinner. It's like, oh, man, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was funny because in the beginning I had, uh, I was getting nosebleeds. And at the, at the worst time, like we were at uh, Christmas time, we were at a friend's place for a little Christmas get together. And my nose started bleeding and it went on for 45 minutes. So everyone's, you know, everyone's doing the you know Christmas cheer stuff, and I'm in the bathroom trying to wait out a nosebleed. But they've they've oh, kind of no. subsided now. It's less of an issue. But the blood thinners are, they could be problematic if you cut yourself for sure. And I've done it a couple of times, and like I said, you bleed for quite a while. It's crazy. Um, the other side effect would be, uh, periodically I get a little bit of dizziness if I stand up too fast, and that's that's not normal for me. So uh, I'm kind of careful with it at times. <clears throat> yeah, usually my wife can tell because I'll stand up and then I'll just sort of lean against the kitchen counter for a minute, catch my breath, and then, okay, now I can do what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. These things can make you feel old at that moment, right? Oh, God, because yeah. It's the medication. It's not you, right? It's just the medication having an influence on that. Yeah. Like the blood pressure yeah. medication. Uh, yeah. 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 It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is fun right yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting yeah. used to a new norm is kind of interesting yeah yeah, I, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm usually I'm pretty adaptable I mean uh, my father was in the military so we moved quite often she always had to adapt to some sort of new environment or new scenario of some type so usually I'm pretty adaptable with change which is okay this, this one's a little bit uh, more extreme but still <laughs> I'm making the best yeah. of it 
Yeah. 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 And um, just, I mean, because your the job that you currently do is it the same one as um, before your cardiac arrest? Yes, I'm a I'm a yeah, CPA. So nothing there changed. No, nope, I'm a CPA. My employer's been really supportive of it. Um, I was off work for uh, I'm going to say a couple of months anyway, and then I just I slowly came back to work. Like I started working exclusively from home, five hours a day, you know, a few days a week, and now I'm I'm back. I've been back full time for a couple of months anyway, um, but I still work from home a couple of days, which I'm grateful for. That uh, that's a big help. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because how is it actually in terms of like being able to focus, uh, get the energy uh, to go to work and and you know be yeah you know, be there? How is it actually? Because eight months is not such a long time. Yeah. Uh, to be full time back to work, right? I I find the the stress really wears me out. Um, mm. I yeah. I commute when I do go into the office. I commute for about uh, about an hour, roughly, and it's it's not too bad. I try and take uh, public transportation at least once a week just to get out of the car and save a bit of energy, <clears throat> but it, it's not too bad. The stress I find is more problematic just because it, it wears me out a lot quicker. Um, and that was kind of where I was yesterday. I was in the office yesterday and, you know, by 10 o'clock, I was pretty much ready to pack her up and go home. <laughs> the, the energy was dying pretty quick. There was a lot of stress yesterday. And in, in fairness, though, there is, there, to a certain degree, there is a little bit less stress now for me because, you know, you, mentally you just sort of change you know, I go through cardiac arrest and you kind of change what what your priorities are. So the stress part of it is different now because I don't worry about everything as much as I used to now. To get stressed out, it's it's got to be pretty significant issues now, which in the bigger picture things is still not really a big deal. But it's still human nature to stress about certain things. Yeah. So it's changed a little bit. So Yeah. Yeah, but work, yeah, work's I, been work's been okay though. It's you know it's hasn't really been too difficult on me. I I found it's a bit of an adjustment still, and I pace myself because I know what my limits are now. Or I have a better idea what they are, so I kind of try and keep it to uh, you know stay within my limits as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What really frustrated me in the beginning still sometimes now is that I was able to do you know in a way everything like I could before but just less good yeah. right like work sporting just live in general I was able to do those things but just everything felt less good and I was able to do those things less good in terms of like the energy I had yeah. I less know, just yeah. energy yeah. and it frust- it's I, I at least it was so frustrating for me and even even now, I sometimes have it still that I'm that I know just like ah, I was able to do this with more ease than than you know before the cardiac arrest. Yeah. Doesn't it frustrate you though? Yes. Um, uh-huh. I mean, my lifestyle before cardiac arrest was I was still playing. Uh, I was still playing hockey twice a week, so I would go to work, go to work, come home, have a quick bite, grab the grab the hockey bag, head off to the rink to go play hockey at nine o'clock at night, you know, uh, have a couple of beers with the buddies afterwards, come home, get some sleep, go to work the next morning. No problem. Um, yeah, no, that's not, uh, that's, that's a non, that's a non-negotiable type thing now. So I'm not sure I'm going to go back and play hockey or not, but, um, I don't have the stamina to do right now. That's, yeah, it's a little frustrating, but, um, I'm slowly, sort of come into terms with it. Um, I get asked regularly by friends and family if I'll go back and play, and I'm like, mm, probably not. You know, I'm I'm not 25 anymore, and it was going to come to an end at some point in time, but I do have to find some sort of physical sport to do uh, to keep myself busy. And I, I – because I've always had at least one, if not – pardon me, if not two sports I was doing 
you know, just as a, a leisure or a hobby afterwards. So I'm working on trying to find another one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah. It's, I know what you mean though. It, it is frustrating. I mean, you gotta, I, one of the things I was thinking about is you, it's, I gotta give myself a little bit of a break sometimes because, because of what's happened, things are going to be different. I got to kind of lean into the fact that physically and emotionally, I'm not the same anymore. It's just, it'll never be the same again. It's not something, you know, I was just, I was saying to my wife last night that it's not, it's not something you can ever get away from. It's not like it's, you know, uh, you have a shirt you really don't like, you just hang it back in the closet and leave it there and never wear it again. It's not quite like that. You can't get away from it. No, It's with you. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's a bit of a different thing, huh. different animal. That's well said, actually. Yeah, well said. Uh, and I agree in like that you got to kind of lean into it. Uh, the moment that you do that, and sort of like fully in a way accept, like okay, it's not gonna be the same anymore. Uh, it still can be good, right? Yeah. Then it can become a bit easier, but it becomes the most frustrating way you constantly compare yourself uh, to how you were before. Yeah. Completely, yeah. It, yeah. it, I think some things about where I am now, I enjoy more. Like the idea of reprioritizing, I think, has been a breath of fresh air for me. So, um, you know, I to me, I've I've been able to find support from family and friends, and it's that's been an exceptional thing for me. I, you know, I, you know, ever I think I. In the hangout, I think I said, you know, people always say that f- that family is most important, but the, uh, you know, it, how they react or how they act after saying it may be a little different. And I, when I say family is most important uh, to me, I'm I'm living, bleeding, uh, living, breathing it. And uh, mm. yeah, it's yeah. it's been I've spent more time with my kids now than I ever have, and it's it's been I'm so happy with it. It's crazy. You know, we've had a we've had a good number of months with my kids in the last you know eight to ten months, and really enjoying it, really liking it. Um, you know, my kids are adults now, but they seem to like hanging out with us, which is fantastic. You know, they have their own life, but they still want to hang out with with dad, yeah. which is to me is perfect. Yeah, I kind of have a a schedule. Uh, my daughter usually sends me a. A note to go she wants to go grocery shopping with dad you know let's go and grab a coffee and we'll go grocery shopping i'm like that's perfect i'm okay with that <laughs> nice. i gotta go anyway so yeah. let's make it a team thing yeah it's been good cool yeah i really yeah. like that yeah hmm. friends friends have been unbelievable as well you know between between helping us out as well as you know being there for my wife when she needed it as well it's you know, uh, you know our true friends really came to the forefront which was which was excellent yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we, we mm-hmm. actually got married six days ago <laughs> really yeah we were we've been together for oh, a long wow. time we just we got we decided to get married last Saturday and we invited oh, everyone well we invited everyone who had something to do with where we are right now so we had you know 20 30 people we did a backyard wedding with with an efficient who came in and, and did it. And it was, we had a good time. It was really good. Yeah. Congrats. Wow, yeah, man. That's amazing. You. Yeah. Everyone wow. thought we were already right. married, but we hadn't officially done it. Yeah. Uh, and wait, was the, I mean, was this in, in both your minds to do it at some point? Yes. Right. But was yeah. it now because of the cardiac arrest that you had sort of like, okay, we should not wait or, or yes. was it That's just exactly. The, yeah. That's exactly. Cause we actually bought, the rings last summer and we didn't say anything to anybody. We were planning on doing it. And then my, uh, I mean, fortunately my, my son decided to get married in between. So him and his girlfriend. <laughs> so we got, we thought, okay, let's wait. We'll wait. And you know, we won't steal their thunder. We'll wait for them to get married. And they did their wedding. And then, you know, I had my cardiac arrest. So we put it off again and, and we just decided to do it. Uh, we did, decided and arranged it last Saturday because it was actually our 10th anniversary last Saturday. So, wow. uh, yeah, it was good. We, everyone had a good time. And uh, oddly enough, it was uh, we decided to do something completely informal. So we just did it in the backyard and 
you know, we had, uh, we had it catered and we had, you know, all kinds of drinks and stuff like that. And, uh, invited, invited essentially our 20, 20, 25 closest friends and family to come and join in on it. And they were all happy for us. And, you know, it was hockey themed. So you had to wear a hockey Jersey to the wedding, which was great. <laughs> nice. So it, it was yeah. a scattering of a whole variety of jerseys there. It was good. We had a good time. Wow. And we we're really, really happy we did it. And, yeah, it was good. But it was all, it was sort of, originally it was just sort of, we're going to do it at some point in time. And then, you know, I had, when I had cardiac arrest, it was, okay, we should make it a priority now. And we did. And it was good. I really, like I said, everyone had a good time. So I'm glad we did it. Yeah. Yeah. We, well, we did. We kept it quiet for quite a while. But yeah, once uh, it was out there, it was out there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm, yeah, I'm so happy to hear things like this. And uh, I think the one, I guess, big blessing uh, that I feel many cardiac arrest survivors uh, have had, and, and me as well, uh, going through this experience is that it does create some sense of urgency and not delaying important things, Yeah. right? Because you face death and you, you felt that it's real and that it's coming at some point. Um, absolutely <laughs> and uh, yeah so that's so awesome that it that you sort of used that you both used that wisdom that you gained from this to to do stuff like this you know to make it happen and uh, that's cool that's really we, cool. Uh, yeah. my my wife is pretty uh, she has sort of a, a medical background she's always been in the field of sciences and um, her and I kind of chat there isn't a week that goes by we don't have some sort of conversation about how fleeting life can be. And this was just sort of one of those events where it became very obvious that, you know, things can change at the snap of the fingers. And, you know, until you kind of come to that realization, it's, it's, it's a challenge to get people to understand what that means. You know, you can, words, words are, are words, but living, it's a different story. And, you know, and she's so yeah. grateful for the fact that, you know, things worked out. And, and she she's the one that sort of recognized that, you know, surviving cardiac arrest outside of a hospital is a rarity. It doesn't happen often enough. It's, you know, as most, pe- most people who are aware of cardiac arrest, it's one in 10. And, you know, it's when you think about it, the things that have to fall into place for you to survive one outside of a hospital are incredible. Mm-hmm. Like just everything yeah. has to fall in place. Yeah. Yeah. It just stars was fortunate enough it did. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Several hundred stars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, but she she's been yeah, this is go ahead. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, well well, this is the one thing that I also feel like Yeah, um after surviving the cardiac arrests I don't know. Yeah, I I really feel this urgency of not wasting time on unimportant things, and many more things have become unimportant. Or or I realize how. Yeah, I, I realize that there are just a few things that are very important, right? And uh, I don't know. Uh, it's it's it, like you said, it's really hard to sort of uh, explain that to people who have not had a cardiac arrest or like a, a an experience with that that you should you, sh- you shouldn't waste time on on. It, well, it stupid has, things that many people waste time on. <laughs> it's it's kind of a trigger. Um, it's kind of a trigger to re-examine or reorganize your bucket list. And uh, you know your your bucket list becomes a much shorter term thing. And, you know you, when you when you put together your bucket list, you think, oh, I got lots of time. I can do it anytime. Whoa, <laughs> let's start yeah, working yeah, yeah. on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so true. Actually, I uh, I uh, started to really draft out my bucket list. I've done like in the last three years, I've really took time to do that. And every year I try to add two things that I want to check off that year yeah. uh, of my bucket list. So I really made it sort of a a priority more in life to, to check those things off my bucket list. Yeah, why not? Like, I mean, that's what it's yeah. for. You know, why wait to your, why wait to your, old and gray and you can't do them anymore <laughs> do them while you can yeah 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 so true yeah. Yeah. yeah our bucket list seems to change once in a while you know you we've got a few 
few items at the top of the list, but it seems like the second half of the bucket list can change regularly, which is okay. You know, but we try and work on items on our list uh, whenever we can. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt the conversation between me and Grant. Uh, this will just take a short moment. If you, you know, want to support this project uh, to allow me to continue doing this, you know, you can buy some of our merch, like the t-shirt that I'm wearing here with an uh, anatomically correct heart uh, with a creative touch on it. Uh, I, you know, it's because we are cyborgs, right? With our ICD. Um, so it's an anatomically correct heart with the cyborg ICD part merged into one. We have that design also on our Heart Warrior mugs. And there's also a quote on the back to inspire your day even more. Uh, if you don't like, you know, this design or yeah, you're interested in some other design, we have other options. So uh, we have the t-shirts with another design. We have a hoodie as well with another design. The mug. Uh, also has a different design. So there's some options, right? Um, and we have a brand new piece of merch. It's even still here uh, packed in. And this is super, super, super exi exciting. Uh, or, you know, I find it very exciting. I worked with another illustrator that I personally know on re-birthday cards. This did not exist. The day that we, you know, died and came back is a day that many cardiac arrest survivors celebrate. It's a rebirth day, or at least reflect back on that day uh, about the journey that they've gone through. And uh, if you are a survivor, uh, you can buy from now on a rebirth day card to a survivor, or if you're a co-survivor listening, then you can buy a rebirth day card to uh, a survivor that you know. And uh, this one here, I will just show, uh, there's three different options with, you know, th three different texts. Um, this one I love a lot. I find this one really funny uh, and uh, I like the design as well. Then we have this one here. It's also kind of, I think very cool. Uh, by the way, if you're listening just to the audio, yeah, the, then you will not see what I'm doing, but I'm just showing the cards here and the texts that are uh, on them. Uh, and of course, on the back, it's just a blank, uh, you know, area where you can just fill in, uh, well, whatever else you want to add to the cards. Now to find, you know, any of uh, the merch that I just showed, uh, check out the description of this episode as I will place a link there that will take you to the page. Uh, where you can check out the merch. Uh, you can also go directly to hardwarriorproject.com slash get involved to find uh, the same page. If you are uh, interested to support the project, but you don't want any of our merch, you can also buy me a virtual coffee uh, through the platform Ko-fi, uh, which is the same as leaving a donation. Uh, so for $2 or two euros, that already goes a big way into funding this project and helping me to continue doing this. And you know, with that, also helping to spread the awareness of sudden cardiac arrest. So again, check the description or go again directly to heartwarriorproject.com slash get involved to find uh, a page with the merch and uh, yeah, info to leave a donation. All right. Let's get back now to the conversation with Corinth. Can you sport? Like, how is that for you right now? Did they give you like a green light um, to be kind of free to do whatever you want around that? Or did you did they give you some uh, some rules to stick by or something like that? I had, I had a number of restrictions initially. I mean, I had restrictions on how much weight I could lift. Um, uh, has some restrictions on driving, et cetera, but it seems like, it seems like a lot of them have been lifted. So I, I could, I could, I am physically able to go and play hockey again. I'm just, for me, I'm not comfortable doing it. Um, we're actually looking at, uh, possibly golfing, <laughs> taking up golf yeah, instead, yeah. Sure. which uh -huh. I mean, it's something you can do, um, you know, well into the earth. 80s and 90s, really, if you want to. So we're looking at doing something like that, less less contact related, you know. Um, 
I, I, I actually still do, I have a treadmill at home here and, uh, I still hit the treadmill three times a week to try and at least keep my cardio up to date. Um, keep it current, keep it active, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm free to do, you know, free to do whatever sport I want to do, I guess. They haven't, I think there was, there was a couple of sports I don't, I don't think I'd want to do like lifting weights is, was never my thing anyway, but, um, it's still, I think I'm still a little bit away from full recovery before I want to get too heavy into weightlifting. I, I do have a couple of small, you know, 10, 15 pound weights I'll use once in a while. But even that after, after using them, there's a little bit of chest pain in there from the ribs, but you know, nothing too serious, but I'm free to do it. Um, yeah. I haven't ventured golfing down that road good, yet. Actually. What's that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, golfing sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did it as a kid and just uh, yeah. as an adult, I just stopped doing it for some reason. So yeah, we're, my wife and I are going to try and get into it. We have um, a couple friends that work at golf courses, et cetera. So yeah. And there's enough of them in the area. We can pick and choose where we want to go. And then who knows, you know, in retirement, in the winter, we can head south. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. I've actually never tried it myself, uh but um the idea of golfing sounds kind of fun, you know, cuz you talk with people, you're outdoors, you sport a bit. It has some cool components to it, I guess, yeah, that can yeah. be. And like you said, you can do it uh until your very old days, so you could keep doing it in a way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's definitely has a social element to it for sure. And uh Yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I think when we were chatting about it, we were not, you know, we're not the kind of people that are going to go out there and try and become really, really good at it. We're not like that. We're out there just to have some fun. So if we don't even keep score, I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, but how, I mean, how is it though to kind of say in a way goodbye to hockey? I mean, in terms of like not not playing it anymore, because it sounds like you're you're very okay with it. But I don't know, it, like it sounds. I mean, it's been a big part of your life too, I guess, right? So isn't it somewhere very, I don't know, emotional and difficult to to sort of like uh, say that it's yeah over now in a way? Um, I'm not sure I'm that comfortable with it yet. <laughs> I think. Uh... I'll I'll know more probably. I'll get a better idea how I feel about it when September rolls around because that's usually when all the rec- recreational leagues start up again. And not comfortable in terms of playing, or how do you mean? Uh, comfortable not playing. Um, sure, sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. At this at, at this point, I I don't think I'm going to play again. Um, but I'm still I'm still very much around it. So um, you know we've got a number of junior hockey teams in the area that, uh, you know, we make a family event and go watch some of those games. And, you know, we're not, we're not far from, you know, we're not, my wife's a hockey fan too. So we're not far from Toronto where we can go and watch games there if we can afford it. Um, you know, we've, we've always planned trips around sports at times. So I think, I think when September rolls around and the leagues start up again and some guys start calling me to ask me if I'm playing and I say no, we'll see how I feel then. But right now I right now I feel okay about it because I'm not really thinking about it because it is the summer and I, I have been away from it since October and uh, for a good reason, so I haven't really missed it yet. We'll see. I mean, every once in a while I get uh, – um, you know, during during um, January, February, I went back to the rink um, to watch a couple of games with the guys I was playing with, and I did I did get a little bit of an urge just to skate, just to throw on my skates and go for a skate. Um, but I haven't. It it kind of came and it went. I haven't really had the urge to go play hockey because there is summer hockey around here too. But I'm just yeah, I haven't really I haven't had the urge to do it. Um, Okay. I've had a few invites yeah. to go and play, but you know, I just kind of declined and said, "Not now. I'm not ready. Mm. Not ready, or not sure I want to." Yeah. Do you think there's some component of uh, I don't know, right? But some component of uh, of fear attached to it, or yes. or not really? No, I, I think yeah. there is absolutely. Like mm. it's 
part of it is, <laughs> part of it is it may have been part of my life for a long time and I love the game, but you know, at the same time, you know, the last time I played didn't end up in good results. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's a bit, yeah. there's a bit of fear, a bit of, there's an element of it scares me to, you know, get out there and play again. And, you know, uh, when I was playing, I still, I still played at a fairly, you know, I, I don't want to say aggressive level, but I still, you know, the heart rate got up to 180 while I was playing. And I don't know if I've had that yet. You know, I'm treadmill. I may hit, you know, 130, 140 at the most. I haven't gotten up to 180 and that part scares me. I, I, you know, I probably should try it on the treadmill first before I get out on the ice or something. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, definitely this makes that. so much, yeah, this makes so much sense, right? I mean, like you said, something really bad happened there doing that sport. So yeah, it makes sense that there's a component of, of fear now. Um, yes. Attached to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, just thinking, like, because uh, the the person who did CPR on you was a teammate of yours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know the person who, uh, yep. yeah, who helped save your life. Yeah, I actually sat down yeah. and chatted with him a couple of times. Just um, okay. I mean, I I knew who he was, but I didn't know him that well. So I went back to a game and went into the dressing room beforehand and sat down and chatted with him and asked him about. You know, how did he know to do what he did? And um, he's a mechanic, uh, like a car mechanic, and he's also a scuba diver. So he had taken CPR a few times, and um, you know, he was he was kind of joking about how when he was taking the CPR course, he asked the question about, you know, what? Uh, how do you know you you'll be able to do this when you actually get into a situation? And the trainer told him. Don't worry when you get in, if you have to get into a situation where you actually have to use it in real life, you know, instinct will probably kick in and you'll have some idea on what you're doing. And he said she was, she was right. Like he just, he just jumped at it. Like as soon as I went down, he jumped, jumped down and started checking vitals and started CPR. And yeah, he was, he was actually more concerned because <clears throat> when he was applying CPR, he thought he had broken several ribs of mine. <laughs> oh. he, he said he was, he's got big hands. So I could see why he would think that he's a fairly, fairly strong guy. He was giving me CPR and all he could hear was cracking. Every time he pushed down, he said, I'm cracking, cracking. So he asked me like, did, did I break any ribs? I went, nope. I was sore as heck, but no broken ribs for sure. I was sore for probably a week, a week afterwards. But I guess the, the human body is the ribs are sort of designed that way to give give a little bit to protect the organs underneath them. Yeah, but he was he was pretty concerned about it. I was kind of chuckling. Yeah, it was it was a weird weird kind of conversation though because it's you know it I I didn't know how to tell him how grateful I was for him saving my life, and I'm I'm sure he could sense it, and I I thanked him. But I, uh, you know, I, I just, I didn't know how to thank him enough, like for my family and, you know, my friends all behind me, like they pretty grateful this, for what this guy did. They don't know him. I only know him from playing hockey. So, yeah, it was, it was a bit, you know, I didn't know how to say it to him or, or what to say to him at the time. But like, I think he was cool with it. Yeah. 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 I think, I think I, um, I said this with the online um, meeting where you were in too, that the best way, I guess, to thank him is by living on, right? By uh, just doing your best now and uh, moving forward. Yeah. I, I kind of wonder um, if he has any long-term effects from, from having to be put in that posi- mm-hmm. position. Like not physically, mm-hmm. but emotionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I wonder if mm-hmm. how he feels about it and whether there's any sort of long-term effect to him, good or bad. Um, I have to try and find it again. Him? <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, did you I thought about that? it afterwards. I thought I should have asked him. And I, I, 
I mean, he's still around, so I, I can still ask him, you know, uh, given there's been a number of months since the incident, I'm sure he's probably thought about it at some point in time. So I'll hunt him down this hockey season and see, uh, see if I can talk to him again. Yeah. yeah. I'd be curious <laughs> to know about that too. Yeah. Funny. It's, it was funny cause I, our, the league I was playing in sends out, uh, email blasts to the members of the, the rec league fairly regularly. And, uh, it was a few days after, my cardiac arrest, they sent out an email to everybody to let them know that the free CPR course was coming up on Saturday. <laughs> uh, and yeah. every uh, every guy on my team took it. Every single wow. guy. Yeah, which I was Amazing, like, holy though. God, thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I just thought the irony, the irony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a good timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's, I mean, a perfect timing in a way too, right? Because like, like, uh, yeah, uh, when there is someone who has a cardiac arrest and they got saved by CPR and the AAD, of course, too, right? But the whole CPR training in general, um, yeah, that's when you realize it's life skill that you should know. So uh, it's good. Yeah. it's good that everyone, uh, yeah, went to take that course. <laughs> there was uh, a there was also a few guys who whose wives um, scheduled stress tests tests for a bunch of the guys on my team after the incident too it's like you're getting checked <laughs> so they're they were telling me like the the following week they're you know hey, i had to go to the doctor to get a stress test because of you it's like sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey but it's i mean it can only help them in a way right absolutely because in case yeah. that there there might be something you can do something then, right? So, yeah. I was a yeah, I was a pretty good example good. of anything can happen because I'm not yeah. I'm not the typical sort of CPR or a, sorry um, cardiac arrest bypass patient. You know, I'm I'm not anywhere near the typical one. When I was in hospital, most of the people who were around me, i yeah, I was the anomaly, really. Yeah, so I could see why people got a little worried about it. You know, stress test is really one of the few ways you can sort of determine if there's blockages or not. You know, particularly of men my age who, you know, when you're playing hockey, you don't always eat healthy afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, see, good things happened out of this, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, yeah. Karen, let me ask you, let's see, um, two more questions. Okay. After eight months now, is there still something that you feel is very difficult to communicate to the people around you? Uh, friends, family, uh, your cardiologists, just in general? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Most people, my, my wife is the closest person to understanding what it means to survive through a cardiac arrest. Most people around me don't really understand what that means and they i think you've said it a few times you know they kind of look at you and go well you're fine and yep. i i don't feel like i'm fine um i'm not you know i'm not falling apart or anything like that but i know i'm not fine mentally or physically so it's 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 kind of hard to uh get people to appreciate or understand what that means and part of it too for me is you know, uh, I'm not really going to share how I feel emotionally with everybody. I don't want to do that. That's not my, not my thing. With my family, absolutely, I will. Um, you know, I've kind of reached out to my kids and some of my friends about how I feel sometimes. But work, no, uh, that's just a non-starter for me. Um, but at the same time, they they don't really, you know, they can't appreciate what it means to survive one. And they just kind of go, oh, you're all fine now. Everything's good. So things can go back to normal. And in my head, uh, you know, I'm kind of saying normal, really. <laughs> yeah, things will things will never be what they were before, but that's okay. You know, I, I don't expect them to be. So I'm okay with them being the way they are now. And I'm finding ways to, to accept it. Um, mm -hmm. In some ways, the way things were before, I don't want. And, you know, some things I do. So I, I get to pick, I guess, to some degree. But trying to get people to understand what it means to survive one, you know, there's, there's still that 
you know, they they think cardiac arrest is just like a heart attack, you know, and it's not. It's not near the same thing, really. They're both heart related, and that's where the similarity ends. And uh, yeah, Killing. I mean, my kids are pretty good about it. I can chat with them. I've kind of given them the free, you know, the free get out of jail free card. If they want to ask me any question, they can ask me, and I've told them that because you know they were they were both there when I was in the hospital. And, um, you know, particularly my son had to sort of see firsthand the trauma I was going through at the time when they first brought me in. So if anything, you know, I'm open to conversation with him anytime so he can at least try and clear up things in his mind. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, that, that part I think is kind of universal for anyone who survived the cardiac arrest. Yeah. I think you've pointed it out yeah. a few times. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a weird unusual sort of thing to go through and it is you know, yeah people don't get it which is okay they're not i don't expect them to but at the same time you know they should probably taper or temper their expectations as well yeah. it is a weird thing yeah uh, what are the things that your wife has seen uh or sees that other people don't see um a lot of it is the emotional side of it. Just, mm -hmm. you know, there's some days where some days can be kind of dark, um, which is, you know, I, I, prior to cardiac arrest, I wasn't really that emotional of a person to begin with. I was pretty even keeled. Afterwards, there's some days where it's, it's pretty dark. There's, you know, there's other times where, you know, things are pretty good, but, uh, we're able to at least talk about it, which is good. Um, and I, I've never been uh, really good at sharing how I feel sometimes, but now it seems to be making myself vulnerable is a whole lot easier, particularly with her and talking about where I go, you know, mentally. Um, you know, we were, we were sort of chatting last night about how that 15 minutes before I go to sleep is probably the worst part of the day just because it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like you're lying in bed and you're not thinking about work and your body is just starting to wind down. And that's when your mind can go to some, some weird and unusual places. And that's when it really sort of hits home about, you know, what's happened. And it's the reality of, uh, you know, as my wife says, a, a near death experience is very different for people if, you know, some people sort of claim a near-death experience because they almost got hit by a car where this is, right. this is completely different where, you know, t right. technically you were dead for, you know, in my yeah. case, you know, 12 minutes or something like that. And, yeah. you know, in that 15 minutes, that's when the clarity of it sort of hits me and kind of, <laughs> kind of humbles me pretty good. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I get I get to think about a lot of things at that time. And usually the next day, if we get into a conversation, I can usually, you know, throw stuff at her that I was thinking from the night before. And we can have that conversation, which is good. Yeah. If anything, I, I said I said to her that this has actually brought us closer together. And um, it, it, I think it has because, you know, I'm I have. Going, you can't. You shouldn't go through this by yourself. This is kind of a, a thing where you need someone by your side from mm -hmm. an emotional perspective to try and help and support you. Mm -hmm. And even for me, because it was, you know, I had a bypass, I needed someone to physically help me as well. So having someone to go through it with has been, you know, she's been she's been an inspiration for me. Yeah, like she's been an inspiration yeah. for me at how she's held it all together during this and. You know, she's been my emotional crutch at times, which, you know, it's been, it's been excellent. Um, I try and tell her, but <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't think she really, I probably, I probably don't find the right words to tell her at how appreciative I am for her being there mm -hmm. for me, but I'm sure she understands it. Yeah. I'm sure she sees it in, in your behavior and, you yeah. know, how yeah. you are today. So, Yeah. yeah. I'm sure she knows it. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's I amazing. Mean, yeah. She offers well, me yeah. she offers me lots of positive feedback too about you know, she kind of thinks I've you know, I, I've been great through this whole eight months just because there's been there's been people who've gone through similar circumstances where they come out of it angry or hate the world. Yeah. And you know, that's yes. mm -hmm. I don't feel that way and she's grateful for that. <laughs> You know, she's she has seen it. So, you know, for me, it's for me, it's me just being me. So I understand where she's coming from, but at the same time, I don't know any other way to behave about it. So yeah, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Some people exactly come out the other way, and uh, yeah, I, yeah, I could see how too, though. Like it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It it'd be it'd be a tough thing to go through if you're already going through sure. a whole lot of hell at the beginning. Just to add to yeah. it. Yeah. And if more things got taken away in a way, right? They can't do their job anymore. They can't do, you know, physical things like uh, any sports anymore. Or it just, yeah, it's different, yeah, for people. Yeah. So I can for see sure. how that can happen as well. Yeah, yeah. I can understand it. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's kind of tough. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I, uh, <laughs> for me, it's a bit, uh, I do, like, whenever I wake up, the next day because I had my cardiac arrest while, while I was asleep um, the, every day that I wake up now I'm like oh I woke up <laughs> and <laughs> it's like oh this is yeah. amazing I woke up again and it's so it sounds so kind of stupid in a way because everyone you know wakes up most days right like they don't have to think about it but for me it's not like a given because uh, there had be there has been a day where yeah, I didn't wake up so yeah. It does, yeah, bring a sense of humbleness, like you said. Yeah, I. Um, um, it's funny I feel, because yeah. before I, before I close my eyes and go to sleep, every once in a while I have that thought about, you know, is am I going to wake up tomorrow? Um, yeah. uh, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. And I, you mm -hmm. know, if I'm going to sleep and I feel restless, or you know, I can feel my heart pounding through my head for whatever reason. Um, you know, I kind of go to sleep thinking, okay, is, you know, am I going to wake up tomorrow? I, I'm sure I will, but, you know, I don't want to take it for granted. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause you never know. Yeah. I have some, I, 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 th I think about your situation once in a while because. Okay. It, it only because you have a, I think I mentioned it before, like you have a, a longer runway to go. So you have a lot more time to think about it. And I'm not. I'm not sure. Like I, I have sympathy for you because of that. I think it'd be a hard one to deal with where you know, you know, the runway is long. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh huh. Um. Yeah, I do think you know surviving this would have been easier, uh, in a way when I was like seventy or something, because then you're more okay, uh, with the the things that you can't do anymore. I think yeah. I don't know if you mean that. Yeah. But yeah, being now in a way quite young still and having and uh, being able to do less things now after this cardiac arrest is yeah, in a way harder because yeah. you're like oh, I should be able at this age to do those things with ease. Yeah. That's I don't know if that's kind of what you mean. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got a yeah. lot longer time to deal with things you can and can't do and yeah, if you're closer to the end, you probably come to terms with a lot of stuff already. You know, when you're yeah, thir or in you your might 30s, feel like you had uh -huh. when you're in your thirties, you still have lots of time to sort of come to terms with where you're at yeah. and where you're going. You know, you've still got a long runway yeah. before to think about it. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah, the good thing I feel for myself is that I'm like you that I try to just you know look forward. And not backwards, uh, like okay, this is where I am now. How will I deal with this, and how will I create something good out of this still? And uh, yeah, that does help a lot. I uh, yeah, I hear you <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not, not a, to be in a way like tox. Yeah, not to be like toxic positive, right? Because that can be also not good to be like, oh, everything is still you know to to only try to look at the good things and to be positive because that's not healthy either. Uh, I do recognize and see uh, the difficult parts and things that I struggle with still, and I, re you know, I'm okay with that, and I 
talk about it. Uh, but yeah, uh, in general, I try to move forward instead of backwards again. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get that. I mean, I'm, I'm not a big fan of looking backwards. I tend to look forward as a first default anyway. It, uh, yeah, I was trying to see where you're going as opposed to where you've been. Where you've been affects, you know, where you've been affects how you think. But going forward, yeah. you can change that. So you have to always True. look forward, I think. Yeah. Grant, a last question for you. What is a last sort of um, best tip or last words that you would like to share with any survivor listening? Is there anything uh, yeah, that you want to share to them? Yeah, I. Um, <clears throat> it's funny, I was thinking about this question. I... I think that um, you got to give yourself a break. You got to, you can't be too hard on yourself. It's not going to help. You got to, as I said earlier, you got to lean into the fact that things are going to be different and just have to find a way to accept it. Um, you know, I, I know that's kind of easier said than done sometimes, but I, you know, it took me a while to sort of figure out where I am and, you know, what, what this all means is as far as, you know, change mentally and physically and, you know, I try and find a way. I haven't completely accepted everything, but I'm slowly coming to terms where it is and I'm finding um, some, some solace in, you know, trying to uh, find the happy things about, you know, what's changed and focus on those ones instead of the negative. I mean, there's going to be, <clears throat> pardon me, there's going to be, negative issues that's just the nature of it but um it doesn't all have to be negative and you know talk to talk to people um i've i found i found talking about it with people who understand have some mild understanding about it is helpful talking with other survivors has been very helpful um i mean i i did that one hangout but that was it was great to talk to someone else who's going through the same thing. But uh, you know, there's a little bit of com there's a little bit of comfort in, in misery, as the saying goes. <laughs> but it, but it <laughs> yes, is true. Yes. It's you you know it's you, true. Yeah. You shouldn't go through this by yourself. It's not yeah. you know it's not something you should go through by yourself. So find some sort of way to you know find some happiness in it and talk to other people and yeah, I I think that would be. For me, that's that's worked. You know, for me, it's worked. It may not work for everybody, but I kind of find it works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not going through this alone is a huge thing, I think, yeah. for many people. So, yeah, yeah I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, completely. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah. Grant, uh, you know, thank you for sharing your story, for coming here on the show. Uh, would love to chat with you again in something like a year or so just to be you know i'm curious how life is then but uh for now really thanks again uh, for being here on the show that was my pleasure i was excited to be to do this thank you all right that concludes this episode with cardiac arrest survivor and heart warrior grant mcleod i uh, really really hope that you gain something out of this episode you know something to help you on this journey that you're on to find anything you know uh that was mentioned in this episode check the description of this episode i will put a link there to the cardiac comeback crew online meetups that we do uh that we were also talking about in the conversation uh that's where grant actually came uh well, that's the first time where we actually met. Uh, these are hosted by the Heart Warrior Project, right? I host them. Um, I'm also working together with Jamie Bowden, the first cardiac arrest survivor that I had on the podcast. He is also a facilitator. He also does occasionally uh, this online meetup. So it's either me who hosts them or uh, Jamie. Uh, but it will be announced who is the host, right? Uh, anyway, check the description to find more information uh, about that. With that, uh, like I also said in the beginning, uh, leaving a rating uh, or a review would really help out this podcast a lot. And you know, with that, to to spread out the awareness of cardiac arrest more into the world, it just takes a couple of seconds. You could do it on basically any podcast app. You know, leaving a rating. Um, 
and yeah, it would again, uh, I, I would really, really appreciate it. I do hope that I get the chance to welcome you again. Take care, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you on another episode. This is Helis Fass, signing off. Bye. Oh, before you take off, one last thing. If you want to support this project, uh, then, well, we have some really cool merch, like, you know, the t-shirt that I'm wearing here, with this anatomically correct heart. Um, I created this in collaboration with uh, an illustrator that I personally know. Um, and, you know, this is, I mean, anatomically correct heart with a creative touch on it, right? There is um, an ICD kind of wrapped around it, or, you know, because we are kind of cyborgs, right? Uh, we have an ICD in us. So I thought it to be a cool idea to have an anatomically correct heart mixed with this kind of cyborg thing into one. Uh, and yeah, that's the design that we ended up with, which I think is really cool. Uh, we have that design also on our uh, Heart Warrior mugs, uh, which have, uh, well, also a quote on the back. Um, we have a pullover as well. Uh, and uh, they, I mean, the t-shirt, the mug, and the pullover also have a different design. So if you don't like this one, there is another option. Uh, also, and this is super, super, super exciting. This is our latest piece of merch that I created with another illustrator. These are re-birthday cards. And I mean, I was blown away that these were not a thing. So, I mean, uh, the, the day that we, you know, died and came back, that day is such a, you know, significant day for many cardiac arrest survivors. Many celebrate it, or at least take time, you know, that day to reflect. And uh, yeah, we have, I mean, this is, I mean, this does not exist until now, right? So from now on, re-birthday cards are a thing. And uh, this one is actually my favorite one. I really like this uh, cards. Uh, this is another one. There's three different ones with three different texts. So yeah, if you are a uh, cardiac arrest survivor and you wanna wish another survivor a rebirthday, then check out the cards, you know, the rebirthday cards that we have. Or if you're a co-survivor and uh, you wanna send like a birthday or a card to them, but for the rebirthday, you can now. Uh, also on the, I mean, on the back, it's just a blank card, right? So you can write, uh, whatever you want on it. I mean, I really uh, The last few months took a lot of time into creating some other merch uh, for cardiac arrest survivors and now as well for ghost survivors uh, Because I mean one it helps to anything that's bought helps to fund this project helps me to continue doing this uh, Secondly, I really like to work on things like this with other people uh, but thirdly, these things did not exist, right? A good t-shirt. I mean, this t-shirt is of organic material. It's quality material. Uh, it has a cool design. Uh, the hoodies that we have, the mugs that we have, the re-birthday cards that we have now, th these things did not exist. You know why I'm saying that is because having this merch out into the world, uh, having people buy them, does also spread the awareness of cardiac arrest. Does also allow people to, you know, start this conversation. I mean, so many times when I wear this t-shirt, people ask me like, oh, that's a really cool t-shirt. What, you know, what is it about? Or why do you wear that? And, you know, the awareness of cardiac arrest by that can be spread out. Uh, most cardiac arrest survivors look pretty normal from the outside, yet what they went through is, uh, I mean, the stars have to be aligned for you to survive. Uh, there are not a, a lot of survivors out there. And uh, yeah, and we don't talk enough about sudden cardiac arrest. Most people confuse it with a heart attack. They think that that is the same, which shows just how little awareness there is out there. And again, yeah, having these pieces of merch out there into the world do open up this conversation and do with that spread the awareness of sudden cardiac arrest. If you will come to buy any of our merch, uh, it will bring funding to the project and it will spread awareness um, 
what about what a cardiac arrest is. Uh, now in the description, you can find the link that will take you uh, to, the, to the page where you can uh, find our merch. Uh, you can also go directly to hardwarriorproject.com slash get involved to, uh, to find it as well. Now, if you're not interested in our merch, but you do want to support the project, you can also buy me a Ko-fi. Uh, which is the same, you know, it's a platform uh, that allows you to donate uh, some money uh, through buying me a virtual coffee. Uh, and, you, you know, anything, even as little as $2 or 2 euros helps this project uh, to keep it running. So, yeah, you can also do that, uh, which, again, you can find the link in the description or, again, go directly to Hard Warrior Project dot com slash get involved to find the merch or a way to uh, donate to this project. Okay, <laughs> having said all that, uh, yeah, see you on another episode. Bye.